fall, first of all, there's the kokanee are, 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 are schooled up there, and then after that's the whitefish. And I've seen hundreds of whitefish in here. The kokanee counts seem to go from as few as a dozen up to maybe a hundred that I've seen in that pool. So they vary from year to year. And then you get the heron in here, and you've, this is where I saw the coyote taking kokanee out, and uh, bald eagles perched up in here, and the kingfishers are patrolling the river. And if you look at the, uh, the air photos, not that long ago, I'm trying to think of what year that was. This was all one big cottonwood wetland with, you know, habitat and wildlife values, and it was altered for the sake of the park and, and other, other reasons. that they, you know, a number of people got together and partnered to, to do some uh, fish habitat enhancement work. Log structures, triangular jams, lateral jams, meander jams. And we have a spawning channel here and some rearing habitat as well. This is all from the fishing game? Uh, it's for, you can see Castle Guard District Wildlife Association, uh, Columbia Basin Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program, and uh, BC Hydro. of steps towards getting everyone in tune was to put up some signs. So this was a sign that we put up with some funding from the BC Hydro. And uh, it talks about riparian habitat and it identifies, you know, relatively common species, bald eagle. We got a fantastic photograph of a bald eagle feeding on a kokanee, which actually happens. These are things that people will see in this creek. When they come here, they have a good chance of seeing these wildlife. So there's a kingfisher and there's kingfisher patrolling this, this creek regularly, you know, for a long period of time. And the campground attendants tell me that people love the signs. You know, they come here and they get to do this little short walk. It's only not even not even two kilometers. And uh, they get to learn something about our local area. And it's fantastic. That's great. And this There's, was uh, put together by the Castle Garter District Wildlife Association? Yeah, the, the Wildlife Association, we put this together. And uh, some volunteers helped come out, come out and, you know, build the, build the sign structure. And Hydro funded the printing and the purchase of materials. So yeah, you gain a lot in terms of your exposure to the public. Right. People come to play grass hockey, watch a soccer game, uh, you know, picnic with a family reunion, and they walk up the trail and they, they see a sign and they're exposed to some conservation information they didn't know. So you have an opportunity to reach more people, I think. Is we want to, uh, without becoming, without intruding on the site, it just provides small signs that allow people to know, like that they're looking at Clintonia uniflora here, that they're looking at the tr specific tree species. Mm -hmm. And we'll just place the sign, it'll be a nice low profile sign. And uh, as people wander around, they can learn uh, just what they're looking at. We've got one more sign to go up, and it's gonna talk about ungulate winter range. And from where the sign will be placed, you'll be able to look up onto the south slopes of Mount Sentinel, which through a part, large part of the early winter, or late winter, you know, you can spot elk from where the sign location is with your naked eye uh, and mule deer and whitetail. Uh, but the sign will also feature uh, moose, uh, caribou, uh, bighorn sheep and mountain goat, all of which can be seen in this region. So it'll be similar to those other signs and provide some information on the connection between protecting the habitat, the, the winter range, and the abundance of animals that you then get and the follow-on to things, animals like cougars and mountain lions that, that, uh, that rely on those animals. So trying to draw all the lines and the connections for people. A couple years ago, uh, again with seed money from BC Hydro, we purchased uh, fly fishing rods and uh, bows and we ran a youth outdoor uh, weekend, uh, partnered with the Conservation Officer Service, Bear Aware, uh, and then some local experts in uh, archery and uh, fly fishing. And we took the kids out. We also partnered with the local college. So we did like a GPS, uh, what would you call that? Like a hide and seek or a treasure, treasure find with a GPS. So the kids actually really took to that. They had a great time doing that. And we took them up to a 3D archery range. Uh, and uh, after learning the basics, they went around the range a few times and had a good time. Uh, we started it off actually on Friday night here in this park with a talk from the conservation officer and Bear Aware, uh, a movie and some hot dogs and some fly casting practice. And then the following day we went out and we fished for the morning on uh, the Salmo River. And then the afternoon we went canoeing and then we did some invasive plant work in the uh, Creston Valley wetlands. We also, last year, we took a shot at doing some restoration in the Oxbow uh, on the Kootenai River here. Uh, nice little Oxbow with an opportunity for, uh, you know, restoration plantings to enhance habitat for waterfowl and, uh, and birds. 
Interest in the school, school grounds, wetlands, is I think that the opportunities for a lot of kids to directly connect with nature is limited. So if there's an opportunity to give them something really interesting to do outside, uh, especially in an environment where they have no choice but to go daily, like their school, uh, it's, a, it's a chance to connect them with nature in a way that might thrill them when nature's still magic. And uh, if people are thrilled and interested in nature, then they're probably going to take a greater interest in its conservation and through that assure abundance uh, in the future for all of us. Yeah, I got into the line of work I, I'm in, professional forestry, because of a love of the outdoors. So it's a good fit to, to work. Uh, and of course, you know, love of hunting and fishing. So it's a good fit to work as a volunteer on trails or, or with the Wildlife Association on conservation projects. You know, my first experiences were definitely uh, in the Columbia Valley wetlands, uh, halfway between Radium and Golden. Uh, grew up on 50 acres, so was very, very lucky. Uh, had a canoe right across the, you know, right in front of my house on the wetlands and, and spent several years exploring those wetlands in, in the canoe in the summer uh, and on cross-country skis and snowshoes in the wintertime. But the wetlands were, were pretty spectacular and, and occasionally, of course, I got into trouble but uh, managed to survive.